STS-51A was the 14th flight of NASA's Space Shuttle program, and the second flight of Space Shuttle Discovery. The mission launched from Kennedy Space Center on November 8, 1984, and landed just under eight days later on November 16. STS-51A marked the first time a shuttle deployed two communications satellites, and retrieved from orbit two other communications satellites. The Canadian ANIC D2 and Syncom IV-1 satellites were both successfully deployed by the crew of Discovery. Palapa B-2 and and Wester-6, meanwhile, had been deployed during the STS-41B mission earlier in the year, but had been placed into improper orbits due to the malfunctioning of their kick motors. They were both safely recovered and returned to Earth during STS-51A. Topic. Drew. Topic. Spacewalks Allen and Gardner, EVA-1 EVA-1 start, November 12, 1984 1325 Coordinated Universal Time EVA-1 end, November 12, 1984 1925 Coordinated Universal Time Duration, 6 hours, 0 minutes. Allen and Gardner, Eva 2. Eva 2 start, November 14, 1984 1109 Coordinated Universal Time. Eva 2 end, November 14, 1984 1651 Coordinated Universal Time. Duration, 5 hours, 42 minutes. Topic. Crew seating arrangements Topic. Mission summary STS-51A was launched from Florida's Kennedy Space Center KSC, at 7.15 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, November 8, 1984, less than a month after the STS-41G flight. A launch attempt the day before was scrubbed at T-20 minutes due to high shear winds in the upper atmosphere. The five-person flight crew consisted of Frederick H. Hawk, commander, on his second flight, pilot David M. Walker, and three mission specialists, Anna Lee Fisher, Dale A. Gardner and Joseph P. Allen. Both Gardner and Allen were making their second shuttle flights. STS-51A marked the first flight of the Space Shuttle commanded by an astronaut from the 1978 class rather than the Apollo era. The two communications satellites successfully deployed were ANIC D2 on the second day of the mission and Syncom IV-1, also known as Liasat-1, on the third day. The orbiter then began a series of maneuvers to meet up with the first of the two satellites to be recovered, Palapa B-2. The orbits of both satellites had been lowered by ground commands from about 600 miles 970 kilometers to 210 miles 340 kilometers to facilitate recovery operations. On day five of the mission, Discovery rendezvoused with Palapa. Mission specialists Allen and Gardner performed an EVA, capturing the satellite with a device known as a Stinger Apogee Kick Motor Capture Device, ACD, which was inserted into the satellite's Apogee motor nozzle by Allen. 
the satellite's rotation was slowed to 1 rpm, and Gardner, operating from a position on the end of the RMS, attempted unsuccessfully to grapple the satellite. Allen was able to manually maneuver the satellite into its cradle with Gardner's help, further aided by the RMS, which was operated by Fisher. The successful, improvised rescue effort took two hours. The recovery of Wester 6 was not as difficult, and took place a day later. This time, Gardner, using the same muscle power technique Allen had used for Palapa B-2's rescue, easily captured the satellite. With Allen's help, he placed it in a cradle in the cargo bay. Following Wester 6's recovery, Gardner humorously held up a for sale sign, as if trying to find someone to sell the malfunctioning satellites to. The Wester satellite was indeed later sold to Hong Kong-based ASIASAT. The STS-51A mission also carried the diffused mixing of organic solutions DMOS experiment. It was the first of a series of comprehensive organic and polymer science experiments sponsored by 3M Corporation. This mid-deck experiment was successful, and the proprietary results of the chemical mixes were turned over to 3M. One other experiment, a radiation monitoring experiment, was also performed. The satellite recoveries on STS-51A were the last untethered spacewalks until 1994, and marked the last use of the manned maneuvering unit. In 1994, the simplified aid for EVA rescue safer, was tested on STS-64. On all subsequent spacewalks conducted by both NASA and the Soviet, Russian space agencies, the astronauts were tethered to the craft by some means. The second mission of Discovery ended at 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on November 16, 1984 with a successful landing on runway 15 at KSC. Footage of the landing was used in the 1985 IMAX movie The Dream is Alive. The flight completed 126 orbits, and lasted 7 days, 23 hours and 45 minutes. It was the third shuttle landing at KSC, and the fifth and last shuttle mission of 1984. Topic. Wake up calls NASA began a tradition of playing music to astronauts during the Gemini program, and first used music to wake up a flight crew during Apollo 15. Each track is specially chosen, often by the astronauts' families, and usually has a special meaning to an individual member of the crew, or is applicable to their daily activities. Topic. Gallery Topic. See also List of human spaceflights List of space shuttle missions <laughs>